So now that we have the M4 MacBook Air finally released, we have both the M4 Mac Mini and the M4 MacBook Air available. And the big question I've seen a lot of people asking out there is which one is the right one for me? Now, of course, I'm in no position to be telling you what to spend your money on. I want you to make the decision so I'm not the bad guy. But hopefully in this video, by going through the benefits and the disadvantages of each device, I can give you some help to make a decision on which one is the right one for you. Now in this video, I'm gonna go through a couple different things like performance, we're gonna go through connectivity, we're gonna go through monitor support, price, value, and of course, portability, because that is a big one when it comes to these two devices. Now, if it's your first time here, my name's Almer, AKA Mr. HTech. On this channel, we make tech simple. And if it is your first time here and you haven't subscribed yet, if I own your description, there is a subscribe button down below. So remember to hit that button. If you do end up liking the video, there's also a like button down there. And of course, share it with your friends and family who also might be interested in the content that I make. So let's check out these two devices and see which one is the right one for you. So when we talk about performance and specs of these two devices, they both have the M4 chip inside. So generally performance is gonna be the same. However, if you go for the base model of each one, on the Mac Mini, you're gonna get 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, and 16 gigabytes of unified memory. And on the MacBook Air, you're gonna get 10 core CPU, eight core GPU, and also 16 gigabytes of unified memory. Now on the MacBook Air, you can go for the next model up, and as well as getting two extra cores of GPU to match the M4 Mac Mini, so you'll get that 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, you will also get a bump up to the 512 gigabytes of storage, but we'll talk about that model a bit, little bit later on in the video because that might be a beneficial upgrade for some of you out there and I'll talk about why. And when it comes to unified memory, happy to say that Apple actually give us 16 gigabytes of unified memory as a base model on the MacBook Air, which is great to see because 16 gigabytes is such a great starting point. And not only that, but for the majority of people out there that get the MacBook Air, it's gonna be perfectly fine to handle anything you throw at it. Unless you're doing some professional video editing, using some professional apps, I don't actually think you'll have to go above that 16 gigabytes of unified memory. Now, of course, if you feel like later on down the line, you're gonna to start to do more professional stuff with your device, more heavy, heavy usage apps and stuff like that, feel free to upgrade to the next storage or the next unified memory level up just to have that kind of safety net. Something to bear in mind though, is between these two devices, the M4 Mac Mini has a far greater sustained performance or sustained cooling, which essentially means that generally when these machines get too hot, if they have no cooling, they tend to go into thermal throttling, which lowers the clock speed of the device and that again lowers the performance. The M4 Mac Mini doesn't have this issue because it has a built-in fan, so when the temperature does go up, the fan goes on, the temperature goes down and it regulates the temperature and then it allows the performance to be generally steady throughout the whole time. The M4 MacBook Air doesn't have this because it doesn't have a fan inside. Once it does get too hot, generally what happens is it's gonna lower the power consumption to cool it down naturally. And when it does lower the power consumption, it's gonna lower the performance of the device. So you may notice that it starts to slow down and yeah, that may happen to you depending on the situation you're in, the environment you're in, what the temperature is outside, and so on. So that's something to bear in mind when you're picking between these two devices. Now I'm happy to say when it comes to display and external monitor support, the M4 Mac Mini can actually support up to three external displays. Now that doesn't matter if it's the M4 Pro or the base model M4 Mac Mini, which is a great thing because then you can have three extra displays to your M4 Mac Mini. Now the M4 MacBook Air previously could only have one extra display while the actual MacBook Air was open with the M3 chip. Now with the M4 chip, the MacBook Air can have two extra external displays while being open itself, which essentially gives you three displays as well. Now of course something you have to bear in mind is that is essentially the same, but the M4 Mac Mini doesn't have its own built-in display. So you're gonna have to A, purchase a display. You're gonna have to B, purchase a keyboard and a mouse to get that full setup experience. Whereas the M4 MacBook Air has a great display, built-in keyboard, built-in trackpad, as well as the other features, built-in webcam and all of that good stuff. So you do pay a little bit extra, but you get everything built in as opposed to getting the M4 Mac Mini and then you have to buy everything separately. That can be a benefit and a disadvantage because A, it gives you the options of customizing your setup completely. So 
because you do have to get your own monitor keyboard mouse you can select exactly what you want to fit your style or fit your customization whereas if you get the m4 macbook air you're basically stuck with what they give you now when it comes to battery life of course this is an easy one the m4 macbook air i think it gives you around 18 hours of battery life of course depending on what you're doing what apps you're using and stuff like that and the M4 Mac Mini gives you an all-day battery life, or well, technically all day. You unplug it when you want, you plug it in when you want, because it is constantly connected to power. The battery life is as long as you leave it on until you switch it off. Now, also, because the M4 MacBook Air is portable and it has that battery, it does consume a little bit less power. And then the M4 Mac Mini, because it is connected directly into a power supply, it is a little bit more power hungry. And of course, when we talk about connectivity and ports, the M4 Mac Mini does have more ports on it with three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back and two USB-C ports on the front. And if you go for the Pro model, you get them three Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back and two USB-C on the front. And then Thunderbolt 5 basically just unlock a lot more options when it comes to data speed, depending on what device you connect to it. And also you get a HDMI port and an Ethernet port, depending on what speed Ethernet you've chosen during the customization stage. On the MacBook Air, you only get two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the side, and on the other side, you get an AUX port. So a lot less ports, but then again, this device is made for portability, super slim, and I wouldn't really call it a disadvantage. You let me know down in the comments, because nowadays it's very easy to find a compatible hub that you can plug into your MacBook Air that gives you all them extra ports, doesn't take any additional power, and you get them... SD card slots, HDMI, USB-C, USB-A, whatever you may need, and then you can just plug it in when you need it or keep it plugged into your device at your desk and use it like that. So let me know if you use any type of hub on your MacBook Air or even your M4 Mac Mini, and other people can see it down below in the description. Now, when it comes to price and value, of course, this differs depending on what configuration you get, but generally, the M4 Mac Mini base model is 599. Now, if you get for the education discount, I think you get it cheaper, like 499 And with that, you might already have a monitor, keyboard, mouse at home that you're going to use with it, which is great. But if you don't, then you're going to have to spend money to get them extra things, which, like I mentioned before, that might not be a bad thing because then you can customize it to exactly the monitor you want, keyboard you want, mouse you want, and all the other accessories you want, and customize the setup to your personal preference. Now, with the M4 MacBook Air, it starts at 999 and you get the display included, keyboard included, trackpad included, etc. Of course, you can also buy these accessories just like you can for the M4 Mac Mini. Get an external display connected to your MacBook Air, use an external keyboard mouse. You can do all that stuff, it will just cost you a little bit more investment because the actual MacBook Air is more costly than the Mac Mini. Now, like I mentioned previously, I would, if you can, bump up the MacBook Air. So instead of getting the 999 base model, go for the 1199 model that gives you the extra two cores of GPU. So you get that 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU. You get extra storage. So instead of 256 gigabytes, it bumps you up to 512 gigabytes. And then you get the option between the 35 watt dual USB-C power adapter, or you can opt for the 70 watt power adapter, depending on if you want the two ports or if you just want one faster port, and that only costs you 200 extra, and then you have a more, more well-rounded machine. Now, the storage is not that big of an issue. I've made videos before how you can get these external storage devices, and I'll link a bunch of them down in the description box below to connect to your M4 Mac Mini or your M4 MacBook Air to the Thunderbolt 4 ports because it is plenty fast and even if you have that 256 gigabytes of storage, you can connect these one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, whatever you want, for generally a lot lower price than it would cost you to upgrade on the Apple website. And then you can enjoy the benefits of having extra storage. And that storage can be transferable between different devices, which is always a benefit instead of just being to just one device. So who should get which one? Now, the best way for me to say this is portability plays a huge factor in these two. So if you're somebody who just takes your device from A to B and like work to home, home to work, the M4 Mac Mini might be a good option because all you really need is a monitor, keyboard and mouse in each of these locations. And then you just take the M4 Mac Mini and the power cord and plug it in back and forth. If you're somebody that takes their device multiple different locations 
and you don't always have a power source where you can plug your machine in, the M4 MacBook Air is going to be what you're going to need because you can also plug it into an external display and dock it if you ever want to do that. The option is always there. But then you also have the possibility of using that long battery life and taking your machine out to wherever you want to go where there's no power at all and still be sure that you can do the work you need to do on it. Now, if you're going to use or if you do use these ProGrade apps and you do a lot of video editing and wherever it may be that takes a lot of power from the machine, these power hungry apps, you may even be better getting the M4 Pro model of the MacBook because it has that built in fan. And like I mentioned earlier, the MacBook Air doesn't have a built in fan. So once you are using it for a long time and if you're using these apps to take up a lot of power and are power hungry, Depending on your environment, the MacBook is going to heat up, which will going to start then thermal throttling, lower the performance, and that can get very annoying. Whereas with the MacBook Pro, you have that fan. So once it does start to heat up, the fan kicks in, cools it back down, and you get that sustained level of performance throughout your experience while also being portable and enjoying that flexibility of going wherever you want. So yeah, if this video did help you, do consider subscribing down below if I own your subscription. Do like the video if you did end up liking it. And share it with your friends and family who also might be interested in this kind of video. I hope this did help you in deciding which machine is a better option for you. And let me know down below which one you would get or which one you did get and why. And I'll catch you on the next one.